Welcome to Pokemon Sports. Welcome to the Pokemon Podcast. I'm biking a play with one Pokemon on the field. I'm Kevin, and I'm under the weather. <gasps> you okay? I'm a little allergenic. Oh no, Kevin was talking about this on the preach. You yes. used to be a little healthy boy, and now you get sick sometimes. I know. I can't take it anymore, man. Just listen Not to me. Holding back. I sound like you. Yeah. What? Deep voice and stuff. Oh, looking. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say congested, I and I was like, oh, all right. Pokemon on the field. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and give your intro one more time. I'm Kevin. I play with two Pokemon on the field. That's how I sound, and now yes. that's how you sound. That's why you're coughing all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, welcome to Pokey Sports. It's a fun time that we're going to be having today. We're waiting for a couple of things. This is the waiting room right now. We're mm-hmm. waiting for Pokemon Worlds. We're waiting for DLC. We're waiting for the second part of the DLC. We're waiting for just really the next fun part of Pokemon. But that isn't to say that nothing's going on. Today, we will be talking about a huge tournament. Uh That is going on under, not under Pokemon's watchful eye, but under the (laughs) The little umbrella that we hold uh, in order to not be seen by them. Uh, We'll also go and play some Dexit. Dexit's going to be fun. We haven't played Dexit in a little while. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the the thing that we need to start with, the thing that's most important on everybody's Mm -hmm. minds, we got to talk about Pokemon Slave. Yes. Yes. The, the, the thing that we've all been waiting for for nearly four years of development, we have Pokemon Sleep. Yeah. And I know and I the, fun, the fun little meme is like, ah, ha, ha. Oh, it's stealing your sleep information. Yeah. Mm. I don't care. Right. I am going yeah. to sleep with this thing on my mattress every single night. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I understand that. Yes, it is. And yeah. I understand that. Yeah, that's a little weird. But I'm also, I don't think I'm that important to not share that information. I mean, if you really are worried about things sharing your information, turn off your phone, go and throw it in a lake. Yeah, like there's, there's they already know what we're doing. (laughs) Yeah, right. The only thing that's missing really is just uh, my sleeping habits. And hey, you know what? Go and go and get the full picture. Why not? (laughs) <laughs> see how irresponsible i am <laughs> you know what i do during the day anyway i'm on my phone i'm on i'm on tiktok instagram youtube uh all of that anyway pokemon sleep is out for new zealanders and canadians you have a whole list of, of the places that it's out uh who's it out for right now brazil mexico australia and canada amazing not i'm me i am one of those I'm none and of so I'll tell you that Pokemon Sleep is a very fun game. It took four years to develop. It looks beautiful. It actually does look beautiful. That, that might have sounded like I'm sarcastic. I'm not. This is a very aesthetically pleasing game. You have this little Snorlax in the middle of your screen, and your goal is to make it just happy by giving it food and by <laughs> feeding it berries and, and feeding it curry that you make from berries. A uh, couple times a day, you'll get to feed it breakfast, lunch and dinner. You have to go and feed it. Uh, that's when you feed it the curry. As you feed it the curry, the curry level goes up and you can feed it better curries. And then every okay. night when you go to sleep, uh, if, depending on how well you sleep and how long you sleep, you get other Pokemon joining you. Like for me yesterday, I think the tutorial is always hard coded to be a Charmander, but I got a Charmander. Wow. Yeah. Way to pander game freak. Right. Giving us Charmander. Do but they evolve there's... and stuff? Uh, yes. Yes, they do. I heard there's also like a shiny chance of these, which is so I have kind heard. of a kind of addictive. I see the problem. Yo. Yeah. Competitive sleep when? How are we doing it? Okay. We, so that's what I can... wanted to look we into. Can... We can kind of do that. We each do sleep for a week. Okay. And then we compare and contrast what we got that week and let the fans decide. Next week is going to be very interesting because you'll have had sleep for a couple of days. I'll have had sleep for about like four more days. 
than me. Yes. Yeah. I'll <laughs> have four more days of sleep than you. <laughs> and then we can look and see if we can we can compare and contrast because there are natures. There are natures in this game. Oh, OK. First, yeah. first to a shiny wins. My Pikachu oh, is a mild nature. Oh, first to a shiny. Yeah. OK. That, that's how we do it. I am down 100 percent. I have to download it first. <laughs> <laughs> Go and preload that thing. Uh, but honestly, yes, if you are interested in being on Pokemon Sleep, go and be on Pokemon Sleep. Don't, uh, in my opinion, don't worry too much about the sleep data. If anything, it would be nice to know. <laughs> it, it would be nice, I think, if the powers that be knew what the, the populace was <laughs> was sleeping like, you know? I I mean, part of me just wants to think of, do you know what they do with that information? Like, I don't know what I would do with someone's sleep information. I don't know. Like what? Uh, just know when not to throw ads at them. When to throw ads at them? Uh, that may maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I will say that they give like a heavy amount of disclaimers, saying that like we will not use your sleep information anywhere except for our own uh, our own stuff. Like Pokemon Sleep, the company yeah. is the only one who's going to have it. That's what they say. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, hey, uh, last week I asked a question. Oh, yeah. I, I said, what, what is your favorite regulation D edition so far? OK, likely and how many said Pokemon. moon? Uh, let's see. We have a couple people saying moon. Yeah, good. <laughs> like Dan, like who people. says Ursaluna hashtag moon bear. Yes. By there the merch. you go. <laughs> we have a new uh, moon bear hat out that you can go and check out at Pokemon and shirt and hoodie Info. and tank. you can go on over to our website through there. Uh, AJ Poke says Heatran. Also approved. Kevin approved. He, Heatran's like the heaviest thing. Oh, Kevin's going to go grab that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I he has a one. Heatran too. You also had an Ursa Luna somewhere, right? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> and then he hops up. Hey, gotta go. <laughs> there he is. Wow. I got, I got the whole fam. Lovely. Ursa Luna and Heatran. All in one big happy family. Stuart says, I think it's best that the entire uh, me- meta was shaken up with how many new viable Pokemon were added. If I had to pick a favorite, I would say Tornadus. He's shiny hunting one in Swish. Wish him luck. Good luck, Stuart. I respect the Torn. Torn's really good. Absolutely. I I mean, it's on most teams. I think right after this, let's go through the uh, regulation D usage. That was going to be a little segue into that. Uh, B3RT says Cresselia. Also disgusting. I don't have a plush of that, though. I'm, Mm. I'm working on it. Is that a that that's plushable, right? Like you can get a Cresselia yeah. plush. I think it exists already. There's a Cresselia sitting cutie. It's Gen Four or in Gen Four Five of sitting cuties. Yeah, I'm just looking through this right now. Yes, there are several Cresselias. I feel like that's a fan favorite, so it's probably overpriced or very hard to find. Mm-hmm. Like if I saw Cresselia in a bin, I'd probably take the Cresselia. Fair enough. Uh, S J Eber Jibber says. <laughs> I'm SJ listening to this on top of the Eiffel Tower. Whoa. What are you doing up there? What? I'll <laughs> get down. Okay. New question. What's yeah. the weirdest place you've listened to Pokey Sports? <laughs> if you have a weird place you've listened to Pokey Sports, forget whatever question I ask and just answer that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I have a feeling that like most people are kind of like me where like they just haven't really listened to it on a weird place. But if you are one of those people who have listened <laughs> to a podcast at a very strange place, then definitely let me know. But yeah, it says I'm listening to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Also, I love how many teams are viable in this new regulation. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we've been putting out this podcast is just an advertisement for Pokemon Sleep and our YouTube. But uh we put out so many videos on our youtube channel and like we're not even close to showing Mm -hmm. all of the the pokemon that have entered the meta i actually have a list of all the pokemon we have left you write it all down in a book yes i do it's the same it fills up a whole page that no one can see that book is blank okay there you go there's words (laughs) magic yeah (laughs) this is actually the book that i took to secaucus i found uh the the vgc VGC paste paste sticker yeah yeah Oh, it was still in, cool. It was inside hey, here. If if we get uh if we get sponsored by them, we can go and um <laughs> slap it on Hi, the mic like a like a race car. 
Oh, that's something worth talking about that we what? didn't have in our notes. Uh, sponsorships is actually allowed in Pokemon now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Uh, Jax says Ursaluna. Dylan says Flying Terra Alolan Muck. Well, that's very specific. That's very specific. I want to see right now if Alolan Muck uh, receives any flying type moves. Yeah, it's called Terra Blast. Okay, we're not talking about just Terra Blast. Though. Yes, <laughs> I, know, I, I, I understand know. that. I know, I know. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. Not otherwise. a single one. Not so it's surprised, just flying to be honest. for the sake of not dealing with ground and also Terra Blast. This might be a meme. I don't know. It sounds like a meme to me. <laughs> I, get, I think the I think once you're not weak to ground, you're not weak to anything. So that's why. Ah, dark once you're poison. not weak to ground, you're not weak to anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark poison only has one weakness, and that's ground. Yeah, yeah. OK, but once you're not weak to ground, you're weak oh. to electric. <laughs> you're weak to rock and ice. You're weak to okay. ice. You made your point, Michael. <laughs> OK, cool, 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 cool. But once you have power of alchemy and you knock Ooh. out a levitate Pokemon beside you and you acquire the levitate, then. Wow, no weakness. Weak to nothing. Yeah. Wow. Or any electric type. Mm-hmm. But yes, I, I see what you're saying, because power. Of, I, that's cool. Steiner says Arcanine Hisuian. That's actually like legitimately competitive. Like really? people are playing that Pokemon in high tier. Yeah, because uh this the HP and the attack are more optimized than regular Arcanine. Mm-hmm. And then having a base 95 speed Pokemon that's able to get stab rock slides is doing really well in the current meta. It's really annoying. Oh, cool. Because typically rock types don't go that fast. Mm. I want to talk about Ian ian's here okay uh it says explosion regilecki next to revival blessing rabska with telepathy is really really satisfying when it actually works rabska with telepathy okay so you explode you have telepathy you set trick room and then you revive it oh wait i have a here's another idea can you explode and then revive the exact same turn? You and just then asked the question again? that I was about to ask. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know if you could explode again. Well, mm, mm. not not the same turn. You'd, you'd come back to the field or would you come from the back? How would that even work? What even happens? Does it does the game crash? Because <laughs> <laughs> the explosion goes first. Yes, like, obviously the the Regilecki is super fast. It's mm-hmm. going to explode. The Rabska then uses Revival Blessing, pulls the Regilecki back. But but where does it go? Does it does it? It can't go on your team. Can't go. It in can't your, go on the field immediately, right? But it also can't go on the bench because how? How would it, it do can, that? I think it can go on the bench, and then the game asks, "Hey, who would you like to send out next once the turn is over?" So then you have a knocked out Pokemon and a a live Pokemon in the same slot. Yeah, I really want to know how that works. I I don't so badly want to know that we'll do this justice. Like you, you'd have to bring this on cart just to see if it crashes the game or not. It's probably going to crash your game. You're going to soft reset right now, and you just started making progress. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i don't think i don't think that ian would have said this without trying at first i'm sure it does work yeah. and i'm sure it does take it to the back but then the spot has to get replaced by something else probably okay or uh, maybe the move just fails until the next turn that is also a possibility uh, justin says i've been enjoying using reggie drago dragon energy hits most things for massive damage i love dragon energy it's so insanely powerful. Do you know that I break that breaks the game too? Well, not it doesn't break the game, but it, it breaks the animation. So the dragon energy, the way it's animated in the game, zooms out. But if you're on the right side with the Reggie Drago, Dra- Reggie Drago's model is so big that when you zoom out, you zoom beyond the map and you just see black. And oh then the move gosh. happens <laughs> for like a split second. But it's my broken game. 
Mewtwo and Old Tourist says, here is my honest, psychopathic and biased reply. Mewtwo. Yeah. I mean, was there ever any doubt? Mewtwo. Honestly, Mewtwo uh, plus specs, I guess that is. They actually put a sunglass or a glasses emoji. And I didn't okay. know that could even happen on Spotify, but hey, it, it did. Uh, Mewtwo plus specs or sash is kind of OP. And that was also a uh, that was also an emoji. Neat. You just outspeed and side strike goes brr and KOs everything. I don't have I a like skill that. issue, I promise. <laughs> Fair enough. Not allowed for reg D, but hey, still strong. Allowed in our hearts. It's a, it's allowed for a smackdown. 100%. 100%. Jackson says, big fan of Cress, Nurse Aluna, and Enamorous. Therian, making hard trick room more viable. Hey, brother. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that is that. Go on Spotify and go and answer today's question as well, because we're going to make sure to answer those next episode. Let's look at the Regulation D uh, usage stats. Mm-hmm. I've been curious about that. So every month, uh, Picolytics.com goes and aggregates all of the usage stats uh, that are that are distributed on Pokemon Showdown. Uh, and he puts them in a nice, neat little, uh, you know, top website top for people to go and use. Uh, let's go through the top 10. If I've got down five, down another five, what do you think? You you probably have that in front of you, so I'm not even going to ask you. But yes, we have uh, 10 and 11 are pretty close to each other. We've got Ursa Luna actually hey, not, Big Bear. not making it to the top 10 just underneath. Underneath what? What what knocked my boy out? That would be Dragonite. Listen, go back to Gen 1 Dragonite. You had your chance. Go back to Series 1 Dragonite. You, you've had your chance. <laughs> like, let the bear shine. Yeah, really. That makes a lot of sense, though. It's it's kind of OP with next gen power right now. You know, interestingly, I don't think have, have you ever seen an aerial ace Dragonite? I've been seeing it pop up because no oh. one's doing fly anymore. They're all doing extreme speed, but flying stab is still very important. Huh. So See, I would have assumed there. that people would just be going like Terra Blast still, but. Well, you no, you're aerial. normal Terra now, so you can't Terra Blast because oh. you're just doing normal Terra E speeds. Okay. Right. See, the the ben the, the I guess the adjustment is airless because nine times out of ten you're still gonna click E speed anyway. But just in case you see an Amoongus, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. let me go for aerial ace. Hmm. Yeah, still with stomping tantrum, outrage, extreme speed, uh, outrage really seeing a a massive spike over the past couple of months uh, as people want to be doing and the big dragon damage. The thing is, it does a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong, but it's mm-hmm. such a risky move. Because you don't get to select which target it goes on. Mm-hmm. So it can go into a protect or it can go into a fairy type. It kind of just depends on what the outrage is feeling like hitting. Yeah. Yeah, it does what it feels like. Uh, moving on to number nine, we've got Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom with 99% of which using fake out. Yeah, Grassy Glad getting removed from the game didn't really stop Rillaboom from getting removed from the meta. This Pokemon is still no, too absolutely. good. It's not top three good, but it's still very, very good. Mm-hmm. Top fake, three grass types for sure. Fake out U-turn, wood hammer, and knock off. Knock off. I, I so that used to be like a very, very big singles move. It is still kind of a very big singles move. Mm-hmm. I when I moved over to VGC, I did not see a lot of people using knock off. That's fair. That might be because of I think there was a there was a time in generation seven to eight where knockoff was a move tutor. And mm. then in eight it wasn't. And I think it still isn't. I could oh, be wrong though. I don't think it's a TR. Oh, okay. So That'll it's just Pokemon it. that get it. Mm. Uh, moving on, we've got Cresselia, obviously. Cresselia, massively bulky Pokemon. Uh, Trick Room, Lunar Blessing, Psychic, and Moonblast, a very standard set. Uh, a lot of people running Helping Hand or Ice Beam on that. I've seen a couple with Icy Wind. Uh, but there are other better Icy Wind Pokemon, one of which is in the top 10. So uh, that's kind of why people aren't running that one. Lunar Blessing is actually a very... It's not... 
OP broken. It's just really good, especially sure. like when you need to clear things like burn and just having a way to do so is really important for a team. Having a way to clear freezes, to clear paralysis is so nice because there was never really a Pokemon that could do that. And now you have a Pokemon that can do that. That's as bulky as Cresselia. Yeah, the only other one was wait, what was what was the other one? It wasn't that sold got, sold do, but it was something else that clears uh a, a statuses Maybe? or that heals your ally. That heals the allies. Yeah, that's life do. Life do. There's yeah. a soul do and a life do. Yeah, but soul do is an item. Yeah, one's an item and one's a move. Yes, and one's for Latios. Latios. One's for not. <laughs> come on uh life yeah interestingly life do uh only restores 25 percent of the ally and and it's uh and, and itself. itself but what's the other one lunar blessing yeah that one heals and takes off the the non-volatile status condition yeah it cleans it right up what does vol- non-volatile mean? Uh, it means not nasty. So what is a volatile? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is? Oh, oh, um, must be like a fire spin. Oh, okay. I guess. I'd consider a burn more nasty than a fire spin, but <laughs> hey, that's my that's just my my opinion. I've been seeing a lot of people using lunar blessing with uh, Ursa Luna specifically. Yeah. Because that'll remove the burn. Did you just say this? And I'm just regurgitating what you just said. No. Great. I didn't say this yet. Great. But it's really convenient because in Trick Room, it works out. Yes. Because of so Flame Orb. Essentially what it does is it'll uh, remove the burn from Ursa Luna. And then at the end of the turn, the Ursa Luna won't take the burn damage. And then it'll reapply the burn as long as it is holding a Flame Orb. Yeah. So it, it's just this like, it's the Ursa Luna that never dies. <laughs> It's the moon core, baby. It's the moon core. Yeah, yeah and it is funny and that the both of them are, are moon Pokemon. I do think they were intended to be played together. Like, I, I, I find it really hard to believe that they didn't ac- that they accidentally made two moon Pokemon that have that kind of interaction and that you can also EQ spam next to. Like, it, it, it's got a I don't know, man. There's mm-hmm. no way. Mm hmm. And it's gotten to the point where you're seeing you're seeing like hyper offensive teams with like Fluttermane, with Urshifu, with Tornadus, with uh, Mungus on it. And then you just have Cresselia and Ursaluna in the back just in case you want to do that. Like you could just have those two by yourself by themselves and have a trick room mode. They're just there if you want that option. Yeah, it's wild. Let's keep going with Lander Asterion sitting at number seven. I'm surprised to see this that high. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I feel like Lander Asterion, albeit very good and very strong Pokemon, I haven't been seeing it as much, or maybe I'm just not noticing that I'm seeing it because it's Mm. not causing an issue for me. (laughs) I just don't want to deal with it. So I don't know. I I haven't really noticed it. I'm finding it hard to believe that it's succeeding in a meta where Iron Bundle is as fast as it is and is as strong as it is. I mean, Iron Bundle not even seeing top 15 here really took a hard hit in this generation, in this uh, series. Or even just the fact that Chen Pao exists like that That should be enough of a threat for Land OT, but it's it doesn't seem to be well enough of a threat for it to go down to, you know, top seven. But still, it's it's very high up. So uh, a quarter of the teams have it. 26% usage. Yep. You turn rock slide, stomping tantrum, earthquake. I, I find it very interesting that a lot of people are running both stomping tantrum and earthquake. Now, mind you, that also could be that like some are sub uh, subbing one of those out for Terra blast or for protect or for taunt. Uh, but it, a very non inconsequential amount of people are using stomping tantrum and earthquake just to, go around the single target or Mm -hmm. or uh double target question or full field question now when you see a lander stare it's pretty much safe to assume that it doesn't have protect just because 33 percent of them are running assault vest and the uh, the remaining 15 percent of them are running choice scarf there's so so many more percentages after those two 
I mean, that's almost half of them, though. Like, that, yeah, but it's true. That is that's it. a yeah, fifty. That's right. Like, that's a coin flip. If you're close sheets and you got to rely on a 50-50, hey, go for it. Do that um, for sure. And of course, I mean, once you're in a game, sorry, I'm going on a tangent, but once you're Do in it. a game, you also have the information of what you've seen so far. And if you've seen like citrus proc, if you've seen Rocky Helmet proc, then you're just like, OK, well, process of elimination. I'll get to this place eventually. Uh, but yeah, since they're running four items, I mean, uh, four moves. You have room for that stomping tantrum in EQ. And the other reason why um, they run both is because of our number nine spot, Rillaboom, having the grassy terrain on the field. Yeah. You're allowed to click stomping tantrum and not have the damage reduced that the EQ would suffer thanks to the grassy terrain. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Grassy terrain reduces EQ damage. Just straight up EQ damage. I thought that was all ground. But no, you're Very, right. It is. It's it's EQ and bulldoze specifically. EQ Don't know why. And bulldoze. You can still go for a headlong rush, and that's maximum damage. Pokemon battles are full of surprises. <laughs> Mike missed that soundboard. <laughs> I've missed it so much. <laughs> uh, let's go to number six. Uh, Heatran. Love that thing. Man. Our very heavy boy. The best grass type in the meta game. Mm-hmm. Heat ran. Mm-hmm. <laughs> best grass type in the meta. Listen, it's crazy, I love, man. I love tearing that thing grass, though. It's so crazy how good synergy like grass terror heat ran is. Yeah. Right. It's it's crazy because heat ran used to suffer the problem of having such good stats, such a strong Pokemon, even tanky. You'd consider it like it could just do it all. It's in an average speed tier, but that's neglect. That's like negligent because of how tanky and how powerful it is. Otherwise, yep. it just used to fall to ground moves to the point to the point where you had to burn an item to keep it alive. Right. You'd, ha- you'd have to burn an air balloon or you'd have to burn a shaka berry just to keep it alive against ground type Pokemon. Now you don't have that struggle. You don't need air balloon. You don't need anything. You just need a grass Terra and you are now resisted to EQs and they can't even hit you with fire type moves because you have flash fire, which kind of just opens up the options for Heran. You can now run things like assault vest, safety goggles, leftovers. You, you just have more options with this Pokemon that you didn't have before, which just boosts it farther up on the usage stats. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we we said this months ago that he ran was going to be crazy. I, it, look at it. It's here. Number six. <laughs> it's here. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing that's really beating it are a bunch of, of other Pokemon that we were like, oh, no, that's that's not going to be a not going to mm-hmm. be a good time. Uh, one of those is still Chen Pao. Heatran, by the way, was sitting at 20, uh, 29.75% usage. Chen Pao sitting at 30.15. Now, mind you, this is at the uh, beginning of July. So this is all the showdown stats of people who are playing this since the uh, regulation D was, was announced. Um, so First the meta month, has yeah. shifted a bit since then, but we are still seeing a lot of of Chen Pao's in there specifically because of Dragonites and the fact that like other things benefit really, really well from that uh, sort of ruined defense drop. We got Uh, very scary physical attackers in the meta. Very scary. Absolutely. Uh, But most people running protect sucker punch, ice spinner and sacred sword, ice spinner more relevant than ever because of uh, Rillaboom as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So dropping that grassy terrain using ice spinner on that uh, indeed is still coming out and dropping psychic terrain uh, ice spinner on that. Um, it Chen Pao with 135 base speed is just oh, it's a monster. I'm actually surprised to see it to look at Chen Pao's teammates mm. and see that Urshifu is above Dragonite. That's crazy. Sure. But yeah, Urshifu just another Pokemon that just entered the meta that's physical and that's terrifying. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to that one. But we've got Amoongus sitting at number four. Amoongus uh, factor is real, baby. Super real. Absolutely. People had no idea what to do with this meta, so they threw an Amoongus on their team. <laughs> yeah. Amoongus is always reliable. It'll never not be reliable. But you know what? Amoongus can't live facade from Ursaluna, just saying. Nothing on this top ten. Minus <laughs> I guess Heatran, maybe, can survive that. <laughs> Cresselia might. Cresselia I, maybe. Yeah. You yeah. need like normal Terra to KO Cresselia. Dragonite yeah. with multi-scale, maybe. Not yeah. Yeah. It's a spooky mon. 
Spooky mine. Uh, number three. A- Amoongus is torn- does, doesn't change, by the way, guys. I'm not it does spending exactly- any yeah. time on it. It does exactly what you think it does. <laughs> I've done that way too many times. In my career at Poke Sports, I've talked about Amoongus about 17,000 times. I'm moving on to Tornadus at number the three. The only thing I will mention. Yes. Is that Amoongus is running Rocky Helmet again because of Urshifu. Yes. That's the only thing I'm saying. It's a good Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got Rocky Helmet. Tornadus. Uh, Tornadus is an interesting one. That one uh, new to the meta. Usually people running Tailwind, Bleakwind, Storm, Taunt, and Rain Dance. However, that Rain Dance uh, can be subbed in for a bunch of different moves. Uh, you can toss in Protect, you can toss in Icy Wind, you can toss in Sunny Day if your Pokemon are reliant on the sun, which with uh, Protosynthesis, a lot of them are. Uh, Air Slash, uh, lots of other things that the Tornadoes can run. Uh, but like everybody, almost, well, a third of all teams at that time, as of July 1st, were running Tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, we were in a very bad spot with Tailwind, man. We were relying on Murkrow and Talonflame to set our Tailwinds. So now that we got introduced again to Tornadus, why would we ever use anything else? Right. Exactly. They buffed the heck out of this Pokemon. They gave it a cool new move. They gave it access to every weather move in the game. Albeit Rain Dance is the most popular one because Rain Dance has the synergy with the Urshifu Rapid Strike. It also has the synergy with your new move Bleak Wind Storm to give you 100% accurate Bleak Wind Storms. So that just kind of has developed as the most popular weather in the current moment. Yeah. But yeah, Tornadus just has a lot of options. And on top of that, they invented a Covert Cloak on this thing. Tornadus never really had a problem with defenses. It just ran Focus Ash because what else was it going to run? So now you have Covert Cloak as an option. You can't even fake out and one shot the Tornadus like you were previously planning on doing like in previous generations. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it, Covert Cloak has really changed the game for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I think we called that out at the time where it's just like, oh, fake out doesn't matter anymore. Oh, cool. Fake out doesn't matter Yikes. anymore. Uh, people are still running fake out because fake out is a huge move when you can uh, call out that mm. another Pokemon doesn't have covert cloak. But if you yeah. hit a Pokemon with covert cloak and then they attack like you've wasted a turn. Mm-hmm. It's basically like you tackled. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, it's a good. close team sheet nightmare. That's for sure. For real, I'm actually super curious about that. What is Fake Out's power? It's like 30. It's 40. 40. 40. It's 40. Tackle does 35, uh, does 40. It is a tackle. It you is have a successfully tackle. tackled. A non-stab it, tackle. Wow. Now I know <laughs> what that's like. That really puts things into perspective, actually. Yeah. Like from the very beginning of the game where tackle is all you have. Hmm. It's when like, you're oh, a little squirtle. Just got a bunch of one. non-flinching fake outs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at what that's like when you're facing another level 50. It does mm, three damage. <laughs> but fake out at least makes them flinch. Uh, but yeah, Bleak Wind Storm is a is a nasty move uh, on Tornadus. And it, the fact that it hits both is just is crazy bad. Um, let's talk about the first and then we'll go to the second. Coming in at number one, Tornadus was number three. Coming in at number one. Shocker. Shocker. I thought you were telling me to be quiet. I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm talking. <laughs> uh, it's Fluttermane coming in at 49.03%. Wow. I guess what Fluttermane does. Guest. The yeah. same thing as before. <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> but... It did uh, change from Regulation C's usage stats. Uh, Ooh, 72. In Regulation C, it was 72%. <laughs> that was bad. At least it dropped by nearly 20% now. So that's oh, a little boy. better. Yeah. So it's sitting at 49.03%. Still most of them using booster energy. Still most of them using choice specs. Shadow Ball, Dazzling Moon, Moon Blast, and Protect. Uh, it's... It's a really good Pokemon, but I will say that right now I'm seeing a lot more uh, using uh, special attack protosynthesis than mm-hmm. in Regulation C when I was seeing a lot of them using uh, speed. Yeah, that's fair. Because mm-hmm. you have Tornadus now. That's right. Exactly. You can just go <laughs> and set up a pri- uh, prankster, prankster tailwind, tailwind yeah. just for nothing. Why not? Um. Okay. 
the the one in number two is just uh man I was surprised to see this come in at number two. I thought that this was going to replace Fluttermane as like the Mm -hmm. 70% usage new number one. And honestly, by the end of July, eh, we might get there. Uh, It's Urshifu Rapid Strike. Watersh, man. Watershifu. Surging Strikes, Close Combat, Aqua Jet Protect. Those are mainly, or Detect. Those are mainly the four moves that you're going to be using. You may want to use uh, U-Turn if you're funny, but um, no. Don't don't do that. Man, you know, a Pokemon's really good when you know its entire moveset and it still wins games against you like you can't stop it. Well, Urshifu is in a very interesting situation right now. We're coming off a of meta against a lot of dark type Pokemon. Things like Chi Yu, things like Ting Lu, things like uh, Chen Pao. Water Rapid Strike Urshifu deals with all of them. Yeah, very easily. That plus you have the added benefit of surging strikes not being nerfed the same way that wicked blow was nerfed. So you're still able to benefit from your three crits at the same, uh, you know, at the same level as the wicked blow. That plus the fact that rain is so popular because of tornadoes now and also the rain, not the rain, water Pokemon in general. Mm. specifically uh special water pokemon just fell off hard right oh, totally they, they got rid of scald so when yeah. we're looking at water pokemon now we don't look at uh we don't look at things other than like iron bundle i guess right but even that's so unreliable now we have a palafin that doesn't need a turn to set up that crits every turn that hits you three times and that has other options against Gastrodon. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Urshifu. I wanted to circle back to Chen Pao. I, I know I mentioned that earlier that uh, Chen Pao and, and Urshifu Rapid Strike are just, they're thick as thieves, those two. Because uh, having, what's it, Sword of Ruin dropping defense. Uh, is it? It is dropping defense, right? Yeah. yeah. Dropping defense by 25%. Uh, and then Urshifu coming in with the crit. On that is just, oh, it's beautiful. It's massive. Does crit, so much extra damage. Crit, Mystic Water, Water Terror in the rain. Yeah, right? Ouch. Like, too much <laughs> math. There's too much math. Too many multipliers. Yeah. Uh, and another thing is just its its ability, Unseen Fist. This was something that I, I said back in Sword and Shield. And for all the people who are just joining us on, on the podcast for Scarlet and Violet, uh, welcome, first of all. The thing about Sword and Shield was that Dynamax and subsequently Gigantamax, it did so many things. Personally, I think that it did too many things, right? Mm -hmm. It doubled your HP. It gave you like hyper beam level attacks with no recharge. Uh, It gave you moves that would change stats. Uh, Mm -hmm. on those same turns like it did so many things at the same time and it made dynamax like super uh, necessary here's urshifu rapid strike with the same kind of situation right you've got surging strikes which always crits and it's a multi-hit move uh which doesn't really need to be but thematically i get it cool it's it's fine uh but then you also have unseen fest then you're also going through protects with it it's doing so many things you can't even hide behind this Pokemon. People are so out of practice playing against it that they still make the mistake of protecting in front of it. Totally. Heck, I'm sure that we both make pr- mistakes protecting in front of it sometimes. It's going to take a while for us to just get used to that different play style of not being protected behind a protect. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a good Pokemon. Yeah, Urshifu Rapid Strike coming in at 48.98%, which is just very 0. Close. 0.05 below Fluttermane. Yeah, right it's very close. And if you guys are wondering how Dark uh, Dersh is doing, Dersh is all the way down at 9.56% <laughs> yeah. usage. So uh, Watersh wins. <laughs> Congratulations. Watershifu knocked, knocked on that door and everyone was like, come in, go right to the roof. <laughs> the life of the... The life of the party showed up. Welcome to Bear Meta. Which is so different than what it was in uh, in, in uh, Sword and Shield, too. Right? Because that was single strike supremacy. Yes. Yeah. That was everyone going for 
dark single strike moves. Yeah. Well, that's also because single strike was technically stronger. It was base 80 versus base 75 from the rapid strike, which is a weird thing they did. But I guess just because rapid strike was multi hit, they nerfed it five BP. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, they, they nerfed Dersh this time around. They put it down to 75 as well, which isn't a big change. But hey, that's what happened. <laughs> PP. I'll give you that. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. I, I want to draw some attention to the YouTube channel again, youtube.com slash pokesports. This week we have put out uh, another SmackDown video. Uh, one is Calyrex versus the other Calyrex. Calyrex Shadow Rider versus Calyrex Ice Rider. Uh, it's a good set of battles. Very conveniently placed because we had a Glacier video, then a Spectre video, and now the <laughs> now totally have, intentional yeah how uh -huh, we did that on purpose <laughs> the exact thing that happened was i was like i am very busy for the next couple of days let's move a bunch of kevin videos ahead of each other and then it was oh spectre or glazed year i didn't notice that until <laughs> right this second and now we're doing calyrex shadow and ice here we are we got here exactly uh Pokemon Sleep is a fun time. We're going to keep going with Pokemon Sleep, of course. Uh, the I want to talk about this tournament. Oh, mm. my gosh. This tournament looks amazing. Uh, Nino Poke Bros, friend of the channel, a friend of us personally. Great guy. Love Nino. Go and follow him on Twitch if you haven't already. Uh, is putting out yet another in his Nino Scarlet Violet FF series. Uh, this one having how many people? 550 ish oh my goodness absolutely nuts how many people he gets to come out to these things but incredible amount of people mm -hmm. i mean it does help that's a that regional it's literally a regional it you're is having a regional, a regional online yeah I, I think i remember the champions cup remember when that was a thing with yep. like wolf click and ave drive i i remember the champions cup being around 500 and that was the largest online tournament in the history of Pokemon at the time. I, Nino Poke Bros uh, we beat it on floored. a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. We uh, were <laughs> floored when we saw that. This is just the Nino Saturday night tour. That's okay, right. here we go. <laughs> These days, like, yeah, that's, my, that's my Tuesday. <laughs> hey, guys, look. I have a tournament. <laughs> uh, about this tournament. Uh, his tournament uh, is a $1,000 prize pool. Amazing. Open team sheets. Team sheet errors will result in a game loss. Uh, it's, Standard VGC rules, bring six, choose four. Uh, he's having a two-day event. The day one is a best of three until top cut, X2. And then day two is five Swiss rounds, followed by a top eight best of three single elimination bracket. Uh, awesome. Regional, got it. Yeah, it's basically a regional, and it works really, <laughs> really well. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that these exist. I, I will say that I think the big draw, one of the big draws, uh, apart from the fact that it's hosted by Nino and, and people regard Nino as a very consistent and very fair uh, individual, uh, not to mention he's just the nicest guy around. Uh, this is a paid, like, this is a paid tournament. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, people will be will be walking home with some kind of prizing. You don't see that a lot on on community tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, you see it in the in the just kind of for the love of the game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Just for the practice. Especially before like Worlds and Rage D. There's a lot of Worlds competitor here competitors here in this top eight. Right, exactly. But like even just looking through the rest of the limitless tournaments going on right now, uh, we've got most tournaments out here that are going for like 64 players. Some of them are hitting them. Uh, but most of them either have have zero because they're just people trying to kind of put things together. Mm -hmm. Um or they're sitting around like five to 25. Yeah. Like I'm pretty it, it's sure. very inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this is like one of the largest that Limitless has seen in a very long time. It's definitely one of the largest that I've seen in a very long time. Right. But I mean, like there are some, that doesn't mean that the other tournaments aren't, aren't great. Right. Like I'm looking at uh beanie brawl right now. Mm -hmm. uh, beanie brawl's free entry. We know, we know uh beanie who puts that together. Mm -hmm. Um, currently sitting at around like was this 15 yeah 15 people that's that's pretty great to get a 16 person tournament going 
that's awesome. You're definitely going to get that extra person by tomorrow, uh, which is when the the thing opens. Actually, by the time people are listening to this on the on the podcast, it'll have either opened or it will open. So go and check that out because it opens at 6 p.m. EDT on Wednesday, July 19th. So if, if anyone works at Limitless, say, cool, cool, cool. we've been trying to get accepted for a very long time now. Accept us. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> someone knows someone that works at Limitless. Put in a good word for Poke Sports. We're trying. <laughs> so just, just, just thought I'd shoot my shot, man. We've been good waiting job. quite you know a while. We're going we're <laughs> to use our platform to do some good today. Yeah. <laughs> Let us in. <laughs> Let us in. <laughs> Is that what Reggie Rock sounds like when he knocks on your door? <laughs> un, 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 un. <laughs> hey, Reggie Rock's here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Shout out to Marco Fierro for taking that tour. Good job, Mike Michael Der Best from Germany for taking second place as well with a Fury Giraffe nonetheless. If you guys are wondering what the first team was, it was Chen Power, Dragonite, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, Heat Ran, Fluttermane, and Rillaboom. Second place team was Ferrigiraf, Heat Ran, Chen Pao, Fluttermane, Rillaboom, and Dragapult. Why have I heard that name so often, Michael? Michael. Best? Oh, I've heard Marco Fierro very often because he has a YouTube channel and constantly top cuts tournaments. Michael, they're best. I don't know. Where have I've, you I've heard certainly him? heard that name like several times before well they're a pretty good yeah. player i don't know if you know it turns out yeah yeah, yeah they, they, they just got second place in the 550 player tournament so they're pretty good at this game which just goes to show again like just because you see a lot of people top cutting um regionals and nationals so often <laughs> that doesn't mean that they're always going to be the ones to top cut everything right like you you look online and suddenly it's it's a whole different crew of people Oh, well, NAIC had a lot of uh, top competitors just mm-hmm. like drop like totally. names that you'd see consistently. I'm not going to mention their names because they probably don't want me to say it. But right. there were top competitors that dropped and that we have talked to that typically always top cut and they just couldn't make it day two. Mm-hmm. Not every tour is going to be your tour. And that's like a very respectable thing. It's like winners are going to win, but winners are also going to lose. Right. It just depends on how you handle that loss. Winners you- gonna win, but also winners gonna lose. Yes. It's good. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. Put it on a hat. <laughs> winners gonna win, but winners gonna lose. <laughs> Losers gonna lose always. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. Mike is too tired to speak, so he's just going to click buttons on the soundboard. I'm going to speak to a soundboard right now. (laughs) It it, what what was that sound? Oh, you know what that means? It's time for Dexit. Dun 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 dun. Wow. There There you go. You can't just (laughs) say the sound. I have a soundboard. It took you too long. I got a soundboard for that. Your tired eyes. I'm going to try one more time. It's time for Dexit. Wow. All right. You you know how this works, folks. Uh, Kevin and I, we both have a Pokemon in front of us. Uh, That Pokemon is a mystery to the other person. The only way that they can guess it is by getting hints from us. And the only hints can be Pokedex entries from past. Oh, we're today only going with uh, Pokemon that were released in Pokemon Home. Keep it thematic, which is which is a small group, to be honest, if I'm, yeah. if I'm really thinking about it. But uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to give it a go. All right, Kevin, uh, do you want to go first? Yes. OK, you ready? Yes. Known as the being of emotion in legend, this Pokemon was feared as any who showed disrespect would have their emotions thrown into disarray. The being of emotion. Sister made you depressed if you oh, angered no. it. <laughs> OK, OK, well, that's that's pretty good. Uh, can you give me another one? OK, when this Pokemon flew. 
People learned the joy and sadness of living. It was the birth of emotions. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, so what were huh. people, hold on what were people before this they just stand there people oh, were okay, i guess <laughs> people were efficient before this pokemon came, came around okay gotcha huh all right I, I think i have an idea but i the only way that i can probably figure can this out really is by telling you right now or by suggesting that this pokemon probably doesn't have any extra entries right there is one more but it There's will more. give it away Mm. okay well then i'll guess first how about that okay uh this pokemon first name starts with an e right oh maybe mm. no <laughs> oh no no <laughs> okay because i thought that was an amorous no to nah. me that sounded an okay amorous-y. i would i would understand why you think that you mm-hmm. know it's a love but i think enamorous is specifically love not emotions right or like enamorous therian the birth of emotions though yeah okay since you got it wrong i'll I'll give you the last one you'll definitely get it the second i say yeah sure it sleeps at the bottom of a lake its spirit is said to leave its body and fly on the lake's surface that's that's one of the trio yes yeah okay uh (laughs) this is mesprit yes it is (laughs) there you go (laughs) see that that you see how that last one is just like gonna give it to you it's like okay there's a lake got it lake yeah. Geo. <laughs> hello <laughs> okay i narrowed it down to three when i was looking at the list of the of the pokemon that were released i was like wow there's there's not a lot of pokemon that were released uh during this but hey, mm-hmm. whatever all right are you ready for mine yes cool um mm, i'm going to do are you ready for yours no i'm, I'm not actually <laughs> I'm not actually because most of the ones will just give it away. I mean, I'll take a point. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You know what? Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, this Pokemon is said to appear to doomed people who are lost in mountains. Oh, mm-hmm. this is supposed to give it away. <laughs> no, this was the the only one that I could possibly find. Doomed people lost in mountains. Okay. What, what is what, it? <laughs> What does that tell you about this Pokemon? It likes mountains. Okay. Doomed people. I'm thinking Darkrai. Okay. Nope. Uh, Let's give you another one. Yeah. Darkrai would have more dreamies dream Mm. entries, right? With its long tail trailing behind, its flying form is magnificent. Its flying form. Okay. So this is a genie. Uh no, it's not. It's, it's not a genie. No, it's specifically it says flying form. I, okay, maybe so it's, it's just talking form. about its cool, cool body. Is it? Is it Giratina? It's not. It's not Jeez, a Pokemon I'm, with with a different form. I'm gonna get this wrong. But it says flying form. <laughs> okay. All right, it chills moisture in the atmosphere to create snow while flying. Okay, hold on. This is Ar- Articuno. There you go. <laughs> is, but wait, what flavor of Articuno is this? Is this like, you know, grape flavored or blue raspberry? I'm trying well, to decide. Now that, now that you know it's, <laughs> at, it's at least Articuno, I can give you the full, uh, oh, okay. the full dex entry. A legendary bird Pokemon that is said to appear to doomed people who are lost in icy mountains. Okay, it, it, it's blue. It's blue raspberry. Articuno. There you go. It's blue yeah. raspberry. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you know eventually. what? That was that was red or blue. I did re- uh, redact the icy mountains oh, wow. thing. But for fire red, it was one of the legendary bird Pokemon with its long tra- uh, tail trailing behind. Its flying form is magnificent. Like that was fly- that was fire red's description of that. Jeez, that's the most important thing you have to say about Articuno. Yeah, the tail. Okay, that's the tail. Yeah. Uh, all right, Kevin, you got the next one. Okay, this is going to be a little bit difficult because this only has one Dex entry, which okay. you can kind of serve as a hint with what you. I'll I'll let you use that as a hint for what it could be from. All right, a violent creature that fells towering trees with its crude hands. Crude hands. This thing's got crude hands. I'm cheating a little bit. But if I say what it is, it'll give it away. If one should chance upon this Pokemon in the wilds, 
one's only recourse is to flee. So rude. No. Ah. Okay. Since I cheated, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Well, how's that cheating? The, why no, is it cheating? I, I said it's not hands. It says it's crude axes and shields. Itself All right, got with it. Because stone. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, really good thing for. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, that's fair. <laughs> I can I can respect you changing some things about it. I, I did that for Articudo. Yeah. Instead of hands, I said instead of axes, I said hands. Then I looked at it, I was like, well, it kind of doesn't have any hands. <laughs> I mean, it kind of totally changes everybody's perception of it. Because you went like crude hands. I was like, well, no, there's not really hands. <laughs> I guess it could have been Rillaboom. <laughs> I guess it could have been could have been a lot. Well, Palkia? axes there's, there's no axes on any other Pokemon if I said axes. No, no. The crude hands. That could have been oh, yeah. out on. That's about it. Wow. All right, I've got one for you. All right. Born from the temperatures and pressures deep underground. It fires Heat beams. Ran. Nah. It fires oh. beams <laughs> from the stone in its head. Stone. It's got a stone in its head. See your doctor. Is that the only Dex? No. I said heat ran already. I could have sworn it was. Um, oh. What else has a stone in its? It head? has slept underground for hundreds of millions of years since its birth. It's occasionally found during the excavation of caves. No. Born from the uh, hot, I could actually probably read most of these, and I don't what? know if you get it. Born from what? the high temperatures and pressures deep underground, it defends itself by firing beams from the jewel part of its body. It's not Landorus, right? Nope. Although this Pokemon is not especially rare, its glittering jewel-draped body draws attention from people. Carbink. It's Carbink. Ah, little guy. <laughs> a little guy. No one remembered that thing was in home. That's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Why? It's the perfect answer. It's a perfect. It's not one. a real Pokemon. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> Tomorrow's video on the YouTube channel is just all Carbink. Good luck with that one, buddy. Yeah, I hope right. you had a great time. <laughs> Can I tell you about Carbink's base stats real quick? It's not it, great. It's base 500. Wait, you're kidding me. Is yeah, it really? Yeah. It's got 150 defense and special defense. <laughs> Brother, why aren't we running Carbink? Because it's got 50 HP. But look at what we're doing with Fluttermain. 50 HP is doing okay. Yeah, except when you need HP to me have meaningful defense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 150 defense and special defense, though. But it gets sturdy, so it's so counterintuitive. Why does it have sturdy and that much defense? <laughs> Just in case. It's got power swap, right? Or guard swap? No, it's whatever. Skill swap? It's no, guard split. You can guard make something split. tankier. Yeah, I guess. I don't care about guard split. What's the one that switches your uh, attack and defense? Uh, I don't know. Rope? Okay. No, something else. It's got to be here somewhere. That can't be right. It doesn't matter. It's not, <laughs> it's not useful at all. Um, Moonblast and Stone Edge. This thing has like, this thing grows up to be a mixed attacker for no reason. Yep. Wow. Uh, all right. I, I want to end the podcast so I can go to sleep, but can we do one more? Sure. Okay. I, I want to prove it to myself. I can do that. The final Dexit. The final Dexit. Okay. Not holding back! It gazes into the flame at the tip of its branch to achieve a focused state. Dalbox. That was just a practice run. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't the real one. Hold no, on. that wasn't the real one. Yeah. Okay, I know you're fine. Give me another one. <laughs> It leaves a brilliant line of light in its wake as it flies across the night sky. I dare say it resembles the heavenly maiden who created the Milky Way. What? I that dare is say? A dex. Yes, that is a dex entry. <laughs> the, the Pokedex is telling me that? Yes, I dare say it resembles the heavenly maiden who created the Milky Way. I say. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so that's that's uh, what along the night sky. Yes. It's, so it's, it's it's flying. I thought that that uh, that sounds like an Arceus Pokemon. Like a PLA yes, Pokemon. That, that was a PLA entry. It's got to be. Uh, oosh, so it's something that flies. Is, is it Vivalon? No. OK, next one. OK. On nights around the quarter moon, the aura from its tail extends and undulates beautifully. <laughs> These are good entries. I don't want to hear anything about no undulate. OK, uh, give me another. Um, it is said to represent the crescent moon. Cresselia. Yes, good job. You got there. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Undulating Cresselia! <laughs> un, 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 undulating. <laughs> un, undulating. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bogey Sports. I am... So I am going to go... Sleep. Uh, thank you so much for listening. This has been great. Go and follow us on, on the other places you can follow us. Cause I, I will be so much more awake over there. Uh, going over to YouTube, youtube.com slash pokey sports, going over to, to discord, going over to Twitter, or Instagram. You can check all that at pokey sports.info. We have uh, a threads. Now we also have threads. If you want to go and check us out on threads, definitely go and do that. Uh, by the way, if anybody's curious about my my very loud shirt that I'm wearing right now, it's because if you're watching the video version, of course, over on YouTube, uh, I have my engagement photos today. So I went and hey, oh, wait a second. We have a I'm going to for say uh, pictures. Hooray. So, yeah, there was that. Uh, Kevin, what do we got coming up on YouTube this week? Guys, if there's not any video that you're ever going to watch with Poke Sports, make time to watch these two videos. Watch the Hisuian Electrode video. Okay. And watch the Alolan Muck video that's going to come out later on the Monday. The Alolan Muck video. I oh, felt no. so bad for my opponents mm -hmm. in both of those videos for different reasons that I will not spoil. Amazing. All right, well, we'll see you in the next one. Go and check those out and have yourselves a great week. Bye-bye.